starting at the 27th verse, and it reads, And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things, not some things, but all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also did destinate to be formed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did protestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hallelujah. Also freely give us all, all things. Yes. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yes. It is God that justifies. Yes. Us. Who is He that condemns? Yes. It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again. Yes. Who is even at the right hand of God? Yes. Who also maketh intercession for us? Yes. Who? Yes. Who? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? Who shall separate us from the love of God? Because we're not totally convinced. All right. So you gotta be totally. 
all things for his good yes. and your good. Amen. Notice then there's two prerequisites. Number one, you must love him. Number two, you must be called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. But you keep that in mind. You see, we say we love God, but do we really? If we love God, then we're not going to put everything else before God. So, the other prerequisite is that we be called according to his purpose. Some people, including some Christians, only live for themselves rather than for the glory of God. You can tell by the things they do. You can tell by what they give their money to. What they spend their time on. I was telling, I saw all these people walking in the aisles this morning. I said, Pastor, it's a shame. The people here in this society are more for a dog than they do for God. But the Bible tells us, if I hit you, just say, ouch, come here, Holy Ghost. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For whom among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. Say understand. understand. So you've got to understand who you are in God. That's right. Y'all ain't excited. Yes, yes, yes. See, I know who I am in God. Yeah. I know that I'm the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit reveals the truth of God to us. To reveal means to make clear that which was previously hidden or unknown. The Holy Spirit can reveal the truth of God to us because he knows the mind of God. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit knows the mind of God because the Holy Spirit is God. I hope you hear me this morning. The Holy Spirit enables us to understand the message of the gospel. Their character that Paul was talking about in Romans 8 and 28 is the person that loves God. And that has a certainty to the point that you know. You see, Romans 8.28 is a key biblical passage having to do with the exalted theme of God's provincial activity in this world. Accordingly, he has worked in the events of history to effect the ultimate realization of his divine purpose. In providence, Jehovah God works through natural laws. This stands in contrast to the extraordinary manifestation of the Lord via miracles. A miracle suspends natural law in a given circumstance, but providential activity utilizes natural law. In other words, God is at work. However, in either instance, a simple illustration can reveal to us the difference. For 40 years, Jehovah fed Israel in the wilderness of Sinai with men that was dropped directly from heaven. That was a miracle. Today, God provides our food. He does through, through natural processes. Yes. That is provincial. 
Hallelujah. Now, we know. The expression we know exudes an air of confidence. In a context where suffering is a major portion of the discussion, it is important that the apostle establish the truth that hardships in life of the Christian do not imply that God is unconcerned with his plight. One of the major points to focus is the narrative seems to be this. How does one reconcile, reconcile the seeming discrepancy between the status Hallelujah. Of God, of children of God, and the reality of Christian suffering. The Lord is pursuing a plan that is far above our limited ability to comprehend. But in spite of life's hardship, we must be able to say we know. Hallelujah. You gotta be able to say. We know, no matter what you're going through this morning, yes, that all things work together for good. Yes. Hallelujah. Lord. All things, even the suffering, is to glorify him. Yes. Hallelujah. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or uh, anguish, no. or persecution, no. or famine, no. or nakedness, no. or peril, no. or sword. No, no. none of these no. hardships. No force, visible or invisible, can frustrate the divine plan of Almighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to know this morning for yourself that you know that God is on your side. It shall be noted that Romans 8 28 does not affirm that God causes affliction to occur. The Lord is not the source of earth's ill, of those that defile his people. He permits them, but he does not cause them. Hallelujah. You see, you got to know that God is good all the time. Yes. And all the time, God is good. Yes. The good that Jehovah works may not be apparent immediately. Uh -huh. It may be years uh -huh. before one realizes the benefit that results from heartbreaking events. But all things are working together uh -huh. Amen. for good. Yes. The word work together is an active voice, a present tense form, which indicates that the activity orchestrated by God is ongoing. Yes. Hallelujah. For good. Jehovah allows adverse circumstances because he knows that they have beneficial effects. God is working out things for his people that will result in their ultimate good. Look at somebody and tell them he's working it for your good. He's working it for your good. He's working it for your good. We are confident that there is an encouragement in this scripture which prompts the child of God to have a positive attitude toward the strengths of life, viewing them as character building and as merely steps to everlasting glory. It is at this point we must remind ourselves again that God is not responsible for any of those evils that befell the Apostle Paul. Yeah. God did not cause the riot in Jerusalem. God did not have his apostle thrown into prison. God did not generate the malicious accusations against Paul. And God did not instill within certain brethren the desire to create a hardship 
for the Apostle Paul in Rome. Yet somehow, the Lord was able to work all these things together. So they accomplished the progress of the gospel. You see, this morning, I want to challenge you to look beyond your problem and see the glory of God. Hallelujah. In spite of the fact that seemingly many adverse elements have conspired to deter Paul's ministry, these events did not frustrate the divine plan of God for him to dispense the gospel. Hallelujah. Rather than actually facilitate the growth of the Christian movement. They work not for evil, but for good. Amen. I don't know what you're going through this morning, but I want to tell you, God is working it for good. Amen. You may ask, how is God working good by means of the heartaches and the disappointments that's in my life? He's working good in helping to build his character in you. Yes. Value 
in savoring the flavor of Romans 8.28. You see, it's a popular scripture. But sometimes when scriptures are popular, we don't really get the meaning of it. Hallelujah. An understanding of this text helps the Christian to avoid the mooring mood in which it is so easy for us to slip into. You see, if you're murmuring and complaining this morning, you don't know. The child of God must seek to remember that the Lord allows suffering as a means of refining us. It's in the fire that you are refined. It's in the fire that you come out as gold. Now, now, now I, I don't want to be one that promotes bad things. But I want to tell you, we live in a world where bad things are going to happen. And when they do happen, you, you got to know something. You, you got to know some things. Glory be to his name. The piercing of life are working together to educate us and to bring us closer to God. Yes, the rejection, the broken relationships, the hurt by family and friends and church, the nudging of the veils of tears helps us to focus on eternity. The day will come eventually when the redeemed spirit will look back upon the bruises they received in the University of Hot Knocks and thank the Creator for the discipline rhythm, acknowledging that without heavens might never have been gay. And we know God's word is true. And we know God keeps his promise. And we know no weapon falls against us so much. And we know no good thing but he will